Yeah, so the Duck River is entirely encompassed in the state of Tennessee. So it doesn't cross boundaries. It doesn't go into Virginia or Alabama or anything like that. So it's, it's really kind of our thing to take care of and to love on. And it's full of a lot of really cool species, everything from common species in high numbers to threatened and endangered species. So yeah, so you're gonna be bagging everything you see. You'll see stuff with tags, you'll see stuff without tags, you'll see all sorts of cool species. We are just downstream from Lillard Mill, uh, which is a 100-year-old dam here on the river. And uh, this is a site that's a, a hotbed of freshwater mussel diversity, um, not just in the state, but in the nation. It's one of the most important sites, uh, really, in the world for freshwater mussels. For this particular area, we're in about ankle deep to thigh deep water. So our crew today, I've got eight people in snorkels and wetsuits who will be sort of kind of army crawling or sort of um, belly crawling along the bottom of the river. And they're, they're using their hands to also tactile search in addition to just visually looking for mussels. Here in the duck, we have more than 60 different species of freshwater mussels. And uh, more than a dozen of those are state and federally protected. This is a rare species. So they're beautiful, Cumberland monkey face. This is rare, yeah. A species that was sort of not doing well in the system. It was a species we were really worried about that now we're seeing in pretty high numbers this week. Yeah. yeah. It's just important to kind of keep an eye on those species because some of them are exceedingly rare and some of them only occur in this river. A350, 117.25. And we're going to go through and, and find anybody that we can. So that includes um, little juveniles, hopefully. We can estimate recruitment so we can, we can think about how many babies are being produced every year. We can think about population estimates, so how our particular species doing. But we can also evaluate how this muscle bed or muscle shoal is doing. Taking measurements on the muscle so that each individual is tagged with a specific code that we can track it through each year. And so we're just trying to get an estimate of the growth for these individual species. And so each one will be uh, measured year after year. And so we can track that through time. So I have a couple of different species in front of me. Um, these are animals that haven't been tagged yet. So they're new finds. We haven't seen them yet in the surveys over the last few years. And so we've sorted them by species. And then we're going through and adding these little hall print tags. So they have a specific color, a specific letter, and then a three number sequence that gives each animal a unique identity. I have it with number. me, yeah. Let me grab it. What is it called? Uh, I think we have about yep. uh, five to 800 individuals that are tagged here from last two years, and uh, we'll probably get another three to 500 today, is what we're expecting. From one of the most diverse rivers in all of North America, the Duck River is just uh, unparalleled when it comes to densities of mussels and diversity, uh, upwards of 40, 40 to 50 species at this site alone, which is just absolutely amazing. You don't see that anywhere else on any other river in the country, and I've been in, in many of them in the southeast for sure where the diversity is really high and, and uh, the duck is the jewel. So any of our threatened and endangered species are obviously a huge, uh, huge uh, area for concern. Um, the duck is a potential big spot for broodstock when we're talking about propagating mussels. So I oversee the Cumberland River Aquatic Center as well, where we're raising baby mussels and releasing them back into the rivers. And so the duck tends to be a spot where we find mama mussels. Um, it tends to be a place where we can find those rare species still, take them to the hatchery, raise, you know, 100 babies, and then release them to a new site. We're upstream of Columbia now and Spring Hill, but those are, are areas that are seeing a lot of population growth. And there's a lot of stresses on this river um, just associated with that, that population growth. So more demands for water use, there's a lot more recreation. What we're doing here is trying to, to sort of gauge uh, how these populations are doing. You know, in order to have quality and self-sustaining populations of anything, you have to have good habitat. So pr protecting the habitat is first and foremost. We want to make sure that uh, our stream banks are, are nice and shaded and forested and things aren't just bulldozed down to the water. We want to make sure there's still plenty of water in this river for these mussels to, mussels to use. We want to make sure this water is, is clean. Just like any aquatic species, they're part of a larger ecosystem. They play a 
part in the balance of the aquatic ecosystem. So I kind of explain it as they are a cog in the bigger machine. You know, a little muscle might not seem like it can do a whole, whole lot. But in some cases, these shoals that we're seeing down here, they can be largely comprised of mussels. And so they're filtering probably millions and millions of gallons of water um, that, that we're not having to um, excessively treat in our water treatment facilities. We're, we're Tennesseans here, and this is part of our, you know, part of our natural heritage, right? I mean, this is a, a beautiful river, and, and all the things that belong in there, we, we were born with them in there, and I think when our kids come along and their kids come along, they should be able to appreciate, you know, the, the same things. Um, it would be wrong for us just to get rid of anything that was here when we were born. Mm -hmm.